The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker before applying. Niche Advice Limited is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Hi, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Please like and subscribe to this channel uh, once you've watched the video, and if you did actually like it, and obviously please uh, put the comments, any comments you've got, any questions you've got below. Right, we're going to talk about visas, getting a mortgage for foreign nationals, living and working here on visas. This is a topic that's cl very close to my heart because I've been dealing with clients, certainly for the last 10 years, and I would say as a, as a broker, as an independent broker, we're probably one of the most prominent uh, brokers in the UK dealing with uh, foreign nationals and visas and we're certainly on the first page of Google and we tend to deal with a lot of clients uh, from that sector so let's get to it um, let's talk about deposit amounts let's talk about visa rules let's talk about underwriting rules let's talk about uh, deposits from foreign uh, countries coming in um, let's talk about spouse visas tier one tier two uh, student visas uh, residential mortgages buy to let mortgages so I'm, I'm, I'm all fully loaded um, so let's go through it um, now, over the years, uh, obviously, with uh, the immigration policy and certainly around skilled worker policy, and we've seen an influx of foreign national skilled workers living and working here in the UK. OK, um, and because of that, there's been a rise in a lot of mortgage uh, demand for foreign nationals with a visa. Unfortunately, the lenders are not great at it and they haven't caught, caught, caught on to a lot of the policies that are out there. But I'm going to explain some of the rules around it and why you should be speaking to someone like me, an expert within the subject, rather than trying to do it by yourself. Uh, it's very easy. My motto is very easy to go to a comparison site and find the rate and press apply. It's a whole different perspective when you have to get a mortgage because there are lots of things involved so let's talk about some of those things generally a lot of the high street lenders they like to um, see an applicant they want to find out when you came into the country okay so they generally want you to be in the country for a couple of years uh, or they've got rules around uh, how long you got left on your visa so generally two two and a half three years they would want you to be left now they don't understand that that question itself does not understand the visa process because generally people come in they get maybe one visa maybe for two years or three years and then a further extension and then another extension so if you're within that process it falls down uh, but we've got thankfully we've got different lenders that have got different policies so one lender says no more you know as long as you're here for two years we're happy with it some lenders say no you need to be here for two years six months or maybe have three years left on your visa or must have been here for three years so they've all got various rules okay generally what i find for foreign nationals is they've all got good jobs so income's not a problem it's deposit deposit is generally the problem because you know they're all their lives they've been living somewhere else so their money is somewhere else their wealth is somewhere else okay and what they're trying to do is buy a property generally with their funds that they've got here okay so one of the biggest questions I get is, can I get you, can you get me a mortgage with the least amount of deposit? Can you do it with 10% deposit? Generally, it's 10% deposit. The answer is yes, but it's dependent on how long you've been here. What do you do? Um, looking at your credit profile. So if you've got a credit profile here in the UK, how long you got left on your visa? Uh, it will depend on that. And income and affordability because some of the lenders out there if you're doing it with 10% deposit they will cap you to four times your income there are other lenders out there that will go up to five times your income uh, on that basis so that's a massive thing so when somebody says can, can you get me a mortgage well actually what's your date of birth how long have you been in the country um, what do you what's your income okay what type of visa are you on because some lenders will do a tier one visa with 10% deposit with a tier two visa, they want 30% deposit. Other lenders will don't care. They'll say tier one, tier two visa will do 10% deposit. Okay, so type of visa. Others are on a spousal visa. Okay, well, let's just assume I'm just doing a few at the moment where one of them is a British national. The other one is a on a spousal visa. What happens with that? Well, we can do bypass rules where the lenders will ignore the visa because they're buying with a British national. OK, so that's possible. Um, we've got refugee type visas. OK, so um, uh, I'm Iranian myself. So I've got a lot of clients that are refugees from sort of the Middle East. OK, professionals living and working here, but they're on a refugee visa. So how does that work? OK, well, generally lenders do not like, you know, they generally go, oh, yeah, I've been to the high street and uh, such and such broker said they can do it. And then now they've told me the lenders told me they won't they will not accept it. Well, I could have told you that right from the start. There's only I'm only aware of 
two lenders that will do refugee visas. And their restrictions are 25% deposit and 30% deposit. And you know what? I would go with the one that's got 30% deposit rather than 25% deposit because the, the, they've got lots of other criteria behind it, which makes it, you know, very hard to get a mortgage from. So 30% deposit for refugee visa. So not all visas are equal. Student visa, can't do it. Full stop. Okay. Student visa, but buying with a British national can do it, but can't take the income because they're a student. Okay. So sometimes I can actually, tell a lie, some, I might be able to. Uh, it just depends on what type of income they are. If they're on a post-grad type of income, then I might be able to do it. If they're just working in Nando's, might might have difficulty. So everything is dependent on the, your visa, your circumstances, how you got here, which country you're from. Is it a high-risk country? Okay, My, myself, I've got, I've got Iranian clients that, you know, will, will, will do Iranian mortgage broker and I come up number one. So they phone me up and the difficulty with them is um, the first question, and this is generally for a lot of the foreign nationals, where's your money coming from? Where's the deposit money coming from? If they say Iran, we go, oh my God, because that is a sanctioned country and it's very, very difficult to prove to a lender because they don't have interbanking links, that money came from there. OK, so you've got to deal with money laundering rules. You've got to get solicitors involved. You've got to get translations involved in terms of where the money's come from. If it's coming from India, maybe not a problem. As long as, again, we can prove where it's come from. Generally, the lenders want to see, especially with foreign, foreign nationals, greater scrutiny around gifted deposits, where the money's coming from. So you can still receive gifted deposits. It's just proving where it's come from. Oh, yeah, my father sold a piece of land. Here's the solicitor's titles. And here's my dad's bank account for three months. Um, maybe they transferred it in my bank account. Here's my bank account in India or wherever, wherever the country is. Uh, and then here's, here's the money sitting landed in my uh, account. Here's maybe the, uh, the notice to say the money's been transferred, the wire. So you've got to give them a picture. There's no point going to a lender and say, oh, oh, by the way, I've just got a gift. Or this, oh, yeah, but it's sitting in my account. It's been sitting on my account for three months. doesn't matter. Where does the money come from? OK, those are the cases that, get, you know, the, a lot of the cases that I get are second hand. What that means is someone's thought, well, I don't need this. Why well, I'm going to save myself a broker fee and I don't need the middleman in there. You really do when it comes to visas and mortgages. OK, um, so because there are lots of. So I'll give an example. Um, I'll name an So Nationwide. OK, Nationwide will say we'll deal with foreign nationals, um, but we need 30 percent deposit. OK, well, generally, I don't use them because I could get better, better products, better lenders with a lot less deposit. However, this is where most people, if you don't deal with it, you'll get caught on this. You phone, you've, the broker will phone Nationwide or you'd phone Nationwide. Will you accept a gifted deposit? Yes. No problem. You know, just give me a gifted letter and the documentation is involved. Standard. However, if the gift is coming out of the country, they will not accept it. If any proceeds of the funds are coming, being used for the mortgages coming from another country, they will not accept it. Okay, so you've got to know that rule. Okay, there are lots of lenders that don't have a rule around that. There are lenders that will have rules around family gifted deposits, who can make the gift, and there are others that will accept from friends, for example. Okay, now that's very unusual because most lenders would want it from a direct family member, mother, brother sister grandparents blood relation generally okay so and when you're dealing with visa it's the visa it's your circumstances it's your credit profile it's the deposit and then you're talking about the other rules and i'll give you another trend most of the guys that i deal with uh, generally like new builds foreign national oh yeah i want to buy a new build i don't like these old british houses and then you're talking about help to buy um, and when you're dealing with help to buy, unfortunately, what happens is, so you say to them, yeah, you can do it. But when you go and see the help to buy and generally try to buy a property, they sort of push you towards their own brokers. And that's where a lot of the problems arise because the brokers don't understand these rules. They'll just offer them a lender that says they will do a visa. And yeah, a lot of lenders look at visas now, but at what loan to value or what are the rules around the underwriting? What are the rules around visas? What are the rules around gifted deposits? Um, um, and that's where things fall. Uh, and then they come to us. Uh, or sometimes they come to us, then they go to the other brokers. And then generally I don't deal with them uh, after that when they come back to us. I say, well, actually, I gave you this. I gave you all my time. And, uh, and you decided to go elsewhere. So good luck. 
um, but you get you get a lot of that. You get a lot of um, criteria failures when you're dealing with visa uh, visa applications. Um, I've got literally hundreds, well, I won't say hundreds, but I've got articles going back certainly 10 years now in regards to dealing with clients with visas. I've dealt with all different types of visas and foreign nationals as such. Uh, we can actually deal with foreign nationals on residential and buy to let. There's a number of lenders out there that will do buy to let now. So what's happened is, because I've got a quite a large client bank, whether they're IT contractors, professional solicitors, lawyers, accountants, what you've got is, I've had those guys where we've bought their first property, we maybe moved up, upgraded from the flat to a house, and they've then started getting into buy to let investments. So we've been in their buy to lets for them. So it's really, really good. Uh, from that perspective, we have got some buy to let lenders and there's a lot of people that have got onto the um, housing ladder and we've moved them along, you know, the deposit gets better or now they've got indefinite leave to remain, which means it's a lot more easier, but they've decided to stick with us, thankfully. Um, if you found this useful, please do like and subscribe to our channel um, and, you know, I'll be more than happy to give you some more information around buying process i've got lots of videos in this channel in regards to you know what documents needed for a mortgage gifted deposits we talked about loan to values and how not to be fooled by certain rates and what's behind some of the workings of the product all those videos are in this channel thank you so much uh, for listening to us and hit like and subscribe and any questions just leave them below and i will try to answer them or give me a call thank you